Okay, so we come to week five in day one and then tutorial two session. Let me share my screen first. Okay, so is the screen visible? Okay, so let's begin with the session. Uh, this session is mainly, uh, it mainly focuses on the introduction of Google Sheet functions, and then we will also have an introduction on uh, basic accounting terms. Actually, like those accounting terms are more like uh, the terms that are used in the Google document uh, on week five's challenge document, document. So let's begin. Google Sheet functions. If you have any question, you can, you can like you can ask at any time. So, so when when uh, when we are saying Google Sheet functions, what are like we know the term function from mathematics. If we have like from mathematics it's a bit it's a, a common word but when we come to google Sheet functions a functions they are a pre-written formulas and which performs a specific calculation or manipulations on the data that we are like uh, that we feed to the google sheets so like uh, when in these functions they mainly accept arguments and then they will return an output so like uh, uh as a basic requirement when we are writing a function in Google Sheet, first we are expected to write, as you can see in the syntax and then column and then equal sign. So like the first one, when we are writing a Google Sheet function, it's an equal sign. And then we will write the function the function name. We will discuss some of the functions. So uh, we will just, let's just consider that this is the syntax on how to use the Google Sheet function. First, we will use a function name and then uh, in brackets, we will give it uh, the argument so that these arguments are an input that like uh, these are more like an input from the data in the in the Google Sheet file that we wanted to perform the functions in. It will get more clear more clear when we are following the decision. So like uh, these functions, it can be nested like within other functions for uh, more complex calculations. This is just uh, a highlight uh, like it's possible to nest functions when we are when we are dealing with complex calculations so uh, these are some of the functions from google sheet it's some as we as as the word as the word indicates it's it adds a value in the range of the sale for example like uh, if we are using uh, like this this is the thing the syntax first we will have an equal sign and then the function name and then uh and then the arguments. So like A1 to A10, we are in this case, we are seeking the sum of the values that are included between A1, uh, between column and A1, and then uh, till 18. So like here comes to the average, it is the same as the sum, but uh, like uh, there is a difference between the functions, the average, it will help us to calculate the average of a set of numbers that are included between the arguments. So like, uh, like before we will use an equal sign first and then there is an average which is a function name and then these are the arguments b2 to b12 so at this time we are seeking the the average of elements between b2 and b12 cells so like the third one will be mean and max mean and max as the name indicates they are they help us to find the minimum and the maximum values so like for example like uh yeah, this one, like before, we will have equal sign and then the function name and then the argument. So like C1 to C5, this from C1 to C5, this means like uh, this function will return for us the minimum element from C1 to C5. Is there anyone asking? Uh, 
actually i have shared the screen are is that visible for you guys yeah uh, casa i think it's visible for everyone okay so like the first one like the maximum also works with the same as the minimum of one or like some average mean max uh, it's just uh, a change of the function name other than that we will have a same syntax and then uh, we will just give them the uh, arguments it, it's an input with Kali and then we will expect a processed output which means for example for the mean for the maximum case we will expect the maximum value from d3 to d15 okay so uh round for round like it rounds a number to a specified number of decimal places for example like this round function uh we we have an equal sign in the round the function round which is a function name and then e8 is a uh, like a sale a cell that we wanted to round to two decimal place for we can like we can say in the argument two part we can say zero if you wanted uh, a decimal place of zero for example if we have uh, a sale uh, for we will see an example a more clearer example later on but for example like we have we let's assume that uh, a sale e8 contains 3.52 so like if we are asking this this function to be processed on e8 it will return us 3.52 but like if we say this two to be zero it will be like three only because three uh, it will be four because like it will round 3.52 into uh like into a number which will be which we, which will have a decimal place of zero so like four it doesn't have any decimal place so round works like this and then the next one will be for power function power function like it's uh, it is the same as before so like we will just use the same syntax equal sign in the function name which is power and then a base and exponent so like in this case arguments will change like like before for before we were just assigning a cell so like in this time we will give it a base and then exponent it will be more clear when we see like a lot of examples so these are uh like a common google chat functions if you get to understand this i think like it will be more clear to proceed into another one or to to do the challenges so like the Coming to the counting terms, the first one will be income. Uh, as you all know, like it's income, it uh, refers to the revenue that's generated by a business through its core operations. Uh, okay, okay, ma'am. Tarafa, you can continue. Yeah, thank you. Maybe before uh, proceed to this uh, counting terms, I have uh, a couple of questions on the uh, function. Uh, you know, especially in the sheet, uh, I would like to know the secret behind those uh, commas or asterisks and brackets while we are, you know, uh, making an argument, you know, sometimes it's not functioning, even for a simple uh, arguments. But here we are going to do also nested functions, you know, the, the, the function, another function on inside, there is also another two or three functions when we, we we talk about nesting functions. So in this case, it, it became more complex for us. I don't know how we can do with that. Maybe it needs uh, another session for for such kind of uh, approach, like especially in the sheet, it is very important when we are getting the text functions. Of course, for the numerical function, it will be good, but for formulating the text function, it is most of the time difficult uh, to understand. Maybe when we see the examples, it may be clear yeah, or sure. yeah yeah it's good to have uh, i think one full session to to to, to know about those uh, secrets behind those uh, uh, i mean terms like the brackets the asterisks the commas and so on thank you okay so like after discussing the common terms on accounting terms it's uh, actually like for uh, for or yeah it's for terms so like after discussing that i will show you uh, the mentioned 
uh, functions using the Google Sheet, so it will be more clear at that point, I, I guess. And then for the nested function, I don't think like we are going to use it, but if we are going to, we will just dig, uh, dig deep on that. Thank you. So let me continue with the accounting terms and the first one is income so like as we all know it refers to a revenue that's generated by a business through its core operations uh, like an income basically it refers to a, a cash or money that is gained from a, a business so like a common income categories it might include sales revenue interest income and rental income uh, as an like uh, just a, a simple introductory sales revenue it can be for example if you guys own a bakery the money that you are going to receive from the from uh, like after selling a cake or pastries it's called a sales revenue uh, and then interest income uh, like uh, with the same scenario if you on a bakery and then like if you keep its money in a saving accounts and then if the interest that's earned is going to be uh, an interest income if you are like if you are saving your money and then like if the interest that is gained from the saved uh money will be like an interest income and then the rental income it is uh, the same scenario like you, let's assume that you you guys own uh a bakery that have a, a spare room so like after renting that room the income that you are going to gain in is called rental income so like these are just some categories and then we have more so like uh, coming to expense is there any question okay Coming to expense, expenses it uh, like it represents the costs that we are going to put in our business so that it can pursue and generate an income. So they are basically in direct work. They are outflow of money that is necessary, like to maintain and run our the business, like to run the business. So like common expense categories, say it can be salaries rent utilities marketing costs and then supplies so like uh, to have a little introductory for these terms also salaries it's like uh, let's assume that uh, uh, again with the same scenario let's assume that you have uh, a staff member in the bakery so like you need to pay them a salary for for each staff member so like it's co it's called salary expense mm, coming to the rent like uh, if if, uh, if for example like the bakery that you are working on uh, you are working on if the place is rented so like you need to pay the rent which means like that it's uh, a rent expense so like utilities it's more of it focuses on uh, electricity water and gas for, so basically for especially for tech related offices it's mainly wi-fi and electricity that could be utility expenses and then marketing costs they are for example like uh, you want to advertise your use your business and then you like you wasted you spend your money on flyers social medias billboard and other stuff so that's called marketing costs and then for coming to the supplies it would be more of um resources for your for your business that are that are called supplies expense so the next one will be income growth rate and then expense growth rate so like income growth rate it's uh, it measures the, per the percentage the percentage change in income over a specific uh, period so like it helps us to assess the effectiveness of the revenue generation strategies and it it also helps us to predict our future income trend like it, mainly we can say that our if uh, we can see if our strategy is a good one or not like based on the income growth rate so like a positive growth rate it it indicates that uh, rising of in an income so like it it has a, a positive uh, a positive uh, result so like if it's negative it means that our income is decreasing so like we need to work on we need to work more on the strategies that we are using and then coming to the expense growth rate the expense growth rate it's uh, 
measures the same way as the income growth rate it measures that the percentage change in expense over a specific period so like the first one it also helps us to predict whether the strategies that we are using uh, to run our business is a good one or not so like a positive growth rate at this time it indicates that rising of expenses but like when it's uh, a negative one it it helps uh, it indicates that uh, like a lower expenses so uh, in order to tell that our strategy is good i think like it's just an opinion you need to have uh, a, like a positive uh, growth rate income growth rate and then uh, like a negative expense growth rate which means we have a higher income than in a lower uh, lower expense so like it will help us uh, these terms they are basically used like uh, on all of uh, businesses so like i think you will have you will find it on your challenge document so don't get confused and you can understand this this way so like <clears throat> this is a reference which will help you to understand more on google sheets yeah this is it like these are a type and then this is the function name and then this is the syntax how you are going to apply it but don't work don't like don't forget to use equal sign like every time when you are using google sheet function you are expected to use equal sign first so let's if you if you if you guys have a question you can ask but if not let's see the spreadsheets example do you have a question so far or you can yeah at sanami you can continue uh, all right good good, good 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 morning and thank you for the presentation um i just i just joined not quite long and uh when you were showing us the google sheets you said you should not forget to use the equal sign i don't understand uh what you mean by equal signs and then um, if you can just uh, give more explanation on that thank you okay at sanami so uh glad that you catch up with us so like in this example you can see that there is an equal sign before the function name for example for sam sam is like it's considered as a function name so like before sam you see an equal sign so like before using any of the google sheet functions you need to first like uh, insert an equal sign so that the functions work uh, without error is that okay now at sanami okay the equal sign is it does it have a a function there or is just a, an indication that we should put or if we put it there is something that is a, there is a function that you have to perform there just write what i want to i want you to okay so maybe like let's continue with this one okay so like at this you can see this fx word, fx word, right? I can see, I can see the sheets. The, yeah. Okay. The so good, like, uh, okay. for example, like you can see this one, fx yes. and then equal sign and then round. Yes. And round, then yes. Blah, blah. So like yeah. fx is uh, a common term that's uh, in, like that's used to represent a function. So like we will use equal and then function name and then the normal like the all, the overall syntax because like there is by default in Google Sheets there is fx word. So like equal means this function will work this. We are indicating that like this function will work on this. Like okay. for example, if this is so like if i forget this equal sign it will it's not anymore a function okay. like the google sheet won't recognize recognize it as if it's a function so like we need to first use an equal sign in order to write the overall syntax that's what okay. i wanted to say okay okay good thank you okay is there another question so far like on the presentation on the is there another question yeah i couldn't get the uh, uh, 
uh, this uh, lesson for the last one minute because of uh, my internet connection. Sorry, others, because I'm taking your time. Yeah, I was uh, against internet. Thank you. Okay, so like, uh, Tarafa, have you were you there when I was discussing about expense growth rate and income growth rate? No, no, I haven't been there. Okay, so like, let me just uh, outline them in short. So like income growth rate, it indicates, uh, it helps us to measure the percentage change in income like over a specific period. And then it also helps us to assess whether the, strate the strategy that we are using in our business is an effective one or not. And it also helps us to predict a future income trends, like whether we are going to have a positive growth rate or a negative one, a positive growth, Growth rate it indicates like a rising, uh, rising in many of our rising the rising of income, while a negative for a negative growth rate it indicates like uh, like a minimizing income. So like expense growth rate it measures uh, it also like the same as the income growth rate it measures the percentage change in expenses over a specific period and again. Uh, expense growth rate it helps us to predict a future expenses trends and then assess their impact on profit profitability so like if we have uh, uh if we have a positive growth rate it think it indicates that a rising of expenses while a negative growth rate signif signifies a decreasing expenses so like uh when we are having when we have a positive growth rate in income growth like a, pos a positive growth rate like it indicates a rising of income right like and uh, a negative growth rate in expense growth rate like it's significant i think like i meet you guys confused confused so like let's assume like this a positive income growth rate and then a negative expense growth rate it uh, signifies that we are using uh, an effective strategy because like we have uh, we do have a rising income and then a decreasing expense this was what you didn't attend Tarafa. so like i think we can continue with the google sheets example if any one of you have a question you can raise it now maybe is there another question so far okay i've been either for sure i will i will share you both the slide in the google sheets after the session any other question Okay, so like we will continue with this one. So like this is just a simple. Uh, okay. This is just a a simple example on how to use the functions that we mentioned earlier: a sum, average, and round, min, max and a lot of them but like this is just a simple example on how to use on how to use the google sheet functions so like on category we have just a lot of different categories and then this on the amount spent we have like for example let's assume uh, i i spent this amount of money on groceries and then this amount of money on transportation and this on utilities and this on entertainment and then uh, this amount of money on dining out so like uh, when we are when we wanted to, con to calculate a rounded amount we will use this formula so like maybe let me write it again so like we will we will use this formula which is first we will use equal sign and then uh, we will use around yeah around function And then we will insert like uh, the values that we wanted to round. So like uh, I wanted to round the sale in B2. So like if you touch the sale simply, it will just count in. So like, and then the places that I wanted to round is, for example, if I said one to one, it will just say 45.8. Uh, if I said to zero, I, it means that I don't want any decimal place 
uh, from this element so it will round it to 46 so like mm, and also uh, something to add when you see this cross sign at the end you can just drag it to the end of the uh, lines that you wanted to apply the same for each so like mm -hmm. for example let's assume let's remove this all and then let me apply this method so like when i am dragging all all of them it will just automatically calculate all of them i don't need to write all of the functions for each cell so this one it calculated for b3 by default and then uh, the same so like let's just one more check for example uh, let's see one only one decimal place and then it's 45.8 so when i drag it it will just apply for all of them this is a decimal place of zero because like it don't have any decimal place before also so this is it for rounding <clears throat> So like cumulative total, we used a sum function to calculate the total. So like uh, I just, uh, I wanted to calculate my total based on like in, in this cell, I just wanted to calculate the total of groceries, which will be the same as the amount that I spent on the groceries. And then the next one, I wanted to calculate my total for grocery and transportation. So like at this time, I will calculate from B1, which is b1 here to b3 which is in here so like this on this cell i will get like the sum of b2 and b3 so like when i am here i will get the sum of all of the all of the cells that i wanted to calculate like from b2 to b6 you can see it's right here on the formula so like this is how you use a sum function uh, and then coming to the average, it is the same as before, but like on the average, uh, this is just my, like, this is my interest. And then I, I was like, I wanted to calculate from after summing all the amounts that I spent on the, like on the categories in he, over here. And then I will divide them by number of the categories, which is, uh, I think five. So like the average is the same for all of them since it's just an average so like it will be sum of all the amount i spent on the categories divided by five so and this we used like the same formula because you can see the orange indication over here which which indicates that the, the average is calculated from b2 to b6 yeah so like this is the average uh, you will first include the first cells that you wanted to start from uh, calculating the average and then the last one will be the last uh, cell that you are going to that you want to calculate the average so this is the mean expense uh, the mean expense again like okay at Sanami you can you can Go on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I I want to ask that uh, the the formulas for all these uh, columns are we the one to put it there or is already on the Google sheet? Uh, the, like for reasons the equals to sign mean in bracket uh, the the b b b b b four or b three an average equal sign average all this formula are we the one that we input them? inside the Google Sheets. Okay, so like uh, the formula says, the for, like there is, uh, like for example, we know that from physics, uh, like we know that uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So like it that is a formula. And then if I'm given a specific scenario, I'm going, uh, I am the one who is going to insert the mass and the acceleration, right? So it's the same case, uh, the same case, the same case applies in here. So like we have a basic syntax rule, which indicates that equal sign and then the function name and then the values that we wanted as an input for that function to process in. So like, so like, uh, after that, mm, that function will 
give us the output. So as you can see over here, this is a round function. This is like uh, the overall, the, the general term is we will, we have, um, let me just, yeah, we, we have this and then over here we have a value one, which is the first sale that we went, the first sale that we wanted to round, to round, and then this will be like places. Places indicates that this is the general formula, as you can see. Places, it indicates, you can see also example, yeah. So like places means, uh, for example, if it's zero, you don't have any decimal place in the, uh, in the output or if it's one you will just have one decimal place in the output and if it's two it, it will continue the same way so like we have some general rules for the google sheet functions and then we will just space we'll, we will make them specific based on our given scenario so like we will use them uh, um, for example like in order to round this element i need to use b2 so like let me remove this one and then uh, I should use like B2 cell over here. So this is specific for this scenario, but as you as, uh, as we have seen, uh, like overall in, in order to use the function round, we will just insert the, the value that we wanted to round over here, the place of the value that we wanted to round over here, and then the number of decimal places that we need over here. At Sanami, did you get my point? Yes, yes. Okay, you can continue. At here, you can continue. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so far. Uh, I would like to maybe be run through uh, the cumulative total formula again. Then also I would like to understand uh, why your absolute uh, reference in that. Can uh, those arguments be done without absolute cell referencing? Uh, I didn't get your point. Uh, did you say absolute? Yes, absolute cell referencing. Then also to understand the, the formula that helps us achieve the cumulative total. Am so I clear? I, no, I didn't get your question. Sorry. Yeah, maybe if I understand uh, his question. Uh, his question is based on this, uh, the cumulative uh, total. That means on the column in D. On column in D, we are uh, referring some uh, cells from uh, B and C. So especially from B, we are, we are, we are uh, calculating for column in D to uh, get the cumulative, I mean, co sorry, cumulative uh, total. So how it, uh, we're doing like this? I think this is his question. Yes, uh, thank you, Terefe. It is that. Then when you go to average expense, mean expense, max expense, uh, you're using, uh, you, maybe you can first go to one of the cells in average expense. Uh, so like, uh, did you want me to, to do it, like to revise it again, the w one column and how I did it, or is that the question? Yeah, one, uh, one of the questions is to take us through how you got the cumulative total. Then now for the average expense, I'm seeing uh, when you couch put in, inserting your formula, you're using absolute cell referencing. Eh? I would like to understand why, or if it can work without using the absolute cell referencing. Okay, you mean, you mean by this? Yeah, without the dollar signs. Will it still give us the, the, the same answer? yeah and what is the importance of using the dollar sign uh, i think like there is no change between them we can ignore the dollar sign yeah you can see here like it's between b2 and b b6 uh here also the same i have removed the dollar sign but it's still working so like i think we can remove this sign yeah i think that it's clear now right uh, yes uh, that one is clear so maybe you take you take us through on how you achieved uh, the, the formula for the cumulative total yeah? 
okay so let's so like from this from this we know that for example for mean max we are like uh for, for example let's let's see maybe which one do you prefer sum average mean max round or power which one shall we go for uh we can use power since it looks new okay so like let's go for power uh, we know that you can see over here the the formula so like we will have equal sign and then the function name which is power and then the base and then the exponent so let's go to the excel and then so maybe like i can remove all of them and then we can write it so for example like uh this is a squared amount of the amount that I spent on the categories. The first one is grocery. So like uh, for if I wanted to get the squared amount for the groceries, I will use this formula, which is power. And then uh, I will just click the, uh, the amount that I wanted to get squared which is the base and then i will give the exponent for example if i wanted like to uh, if my exponent like you know what the, what my what means by exponent so like if it's two it will i will just get the square if it's three i will get the cube and then if it's four it will be it will get quite quadrupled and then it will continue like that so for example for two we will just take the square so uh, this as you can see uh, it's already squared so like we can uh, we can select this cell and then when you see this specific sign the score the cross you can just direct to the below cells also so like it will automatically gener generate the formula the function and then it will calculate the squared amount for uh, the the course the corresponding categories so like as you can see this one is the square of the amounts that are spent in here and then this is the same for this and this one is for this and then this one will be for the last one so like we can calculate the squared amount for each functions uh, for each value like this one is that clear now Yes, uh, that is clear. What of the cumulative total? The cumulative total is the one that uh, seems tricky. Uh, cumulative total, it is just mm. to it is to show uh, the uh, the like how um, how some f the function called sum works. So like the cumulative total, the first one will give us uh, groceries amount that I spent on the groceries, and then the second one will give us the amounts that I spent on the groceries in transportation. So it, it will add the two cells and then following down, it will add like one more cell, one more cell in one more cell. So for the last one, we will get the total of the all amounts that I spent on the given categories. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, the formula, eh? I want to understand it. It looks interesting eh? without having to do it manually. OK, OK, so like again, uh, I, I can just clear this one and then we can do it manually. So like oh. the first, the since I'm seeking for a total, I will just oh. use sum and then I will uh, create a bracket. So like when calculating sum, we will give it a, an initial point and then a final point from which cell to which cell did we, did we went to get the sum of the values. So like, when I click this one, it will just apply to B1, and then this is it for it for this one. But like for the next one, when I drag it, uh, actually like it it did it it did it right. But we can't do like this mm, again B2, so it will be like this. Mm, yeah. So like for this one, it will be from, you can click and then 
B2 to B3. Yeah. So like after getting again this cross sign, you can just drag and it will follow up with the same result. Mm. Okay. So this one is a B2 sum. This one is B2 and B3 sum. And then this one is, I, I wanted it to be B2 to B4 and then I think it will work now. I so, think that's yeah. I think that's why B two was uh, was uh, was locked eh, so that it keeps adding on the other. It's what was confusing. Me. Yeah. So like this is for B two since mm. it's the same, and then this mm. one is from B two to B three, and then mm. this one is from B two to B four. This one is the same B2 to B5, and then right. the last one is from B2 to B6. Okay. 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 You can continue. Robo uh, Collins. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, sure. I'm hearing you. You can continue. Uh, yeah, just to see table is very important and uh, we've been having uh, ups and downs. So if you can really give uh, maybe just a brief uh, roundup again of this table, that will really uh, that will really be nice. That will help me. I'm still trying to really grasp all of it because of uh, my network now is being on and off. Maybe so I wasn't really getting. It. You can give a brief uh, roundup. That would really help. Uh, so like Collins, do, are you asking for me to repeat it or? Yeah, I don't know if that's possible. That would be fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like Shobo is also asking the same question. I need more insight on squared amount and max amount. So like, I think we can go over the max, the max expense and then the squared amount again. Yes. Okay. So, like, first, let's uh, let's get to see for the power uh, um, for the squared amount. Let's first see the power function, uh, like the formula. So, like, it's an equal sign first, and then the power, which is the function name, and then base, and then exponent. So, like, uh, like we will have the base first, and then we will have the exponent so like when the exponent is just one it's uh, itself the base so like if it's two it's squared so like so since now we are uh, like we we need the squared amount we are going to use uh, like we are going to use two so like let me delete it and we can do it again i think so anytime if you if you wanted to do a power function or like if you wanted to get a cube of that specific cell or a square of that specific cell or like four times that specific cell or like continuing with the exponent you can use the power function so first we will write power which is uh, we will write which is a function name and then we will use a bracket so in the bracket the first one will be a base so like for this for this specific cell i wanted to calculate i wanted to scare the the like the the base of this element so like i will just click this uh, specific cell so like uh, it will just automatically uh, understand which cell it is and it i think you can see that it's saying b2 so like i will add uh i will add this one yeah and then i will tell uh, i will tell him that it is two times the current uh, like uh, i needed i needed the square of the the current cell which is b2 so it will automatically calculate the squared amount so like the next steps that i need to do for it in order to calculate the squared amount for all the amounts that i for all of these numbers will be just uh keeping like when when you are seeing when you 
are able to see this cross function, which is in block, you will just need to drag it so that it will just automatically calculate for each sale. So like this one is uh, two times, uh, this one is like B3 sale, the power of two, I, as you can see. So like this is also this specific cell, which is B4, the power of two. Yeah, so like this one is also B6, the power of two. So we can calculate the squared amount like this. Coming to the max, you can just, yeah, let me first delete this one. And then you can, you can do like, uh, uh, as always, you can use first an equal sign and then you will insert the function name, which is max for this case. And then you will just tell the formula from which cell to which cell that you wanted to detect the maximum number. So the first cell will be B2, and then the last one will be B6. So I wanted to calculate, I wanted to get the maximum element between this range, which is from B2 to B6. So when I when I like when I touch enter, I will just see the output, which is sixty. You can see like the maximum number from six uh, from this element to this is sixty. So we are it's right, and we can again drag it. Mm, yeah, sixty, sixty. Okay. So like I think. Maybe like since uh, for all of the sales I am in need, like when we drag this, it will just calculate, for example, which this is from B2 to B6, so it will just automatically assume this one is from B3 to B7, which we don't have B7. So like we can just put the same formula for each sale maybe. Amount spent has already been given. That is given. That's where I'm really having an issue where you based on the amount spent. I think it was given. Yeah, it's given. Like we have the amount spent over here. So yes. So, so what were you now needing the power as exponential? <clears throat> Let me uh, can I yeah. jump in maybe at this point? Sorry. Okay, go on. Yeah, maybe for Colin's uh, question regarding the argument on the power uh, function. When we say power, there is a base and an exponent. The base is means a given number. Then when we say the exponent, it is a number that the base can multiply itself by that exponent number. Like, for example, let me give you a simple example. Two, the power of three. Two is a base. If three is an exponent, two can multiply itself three times when we say to the power of three. Or if we say four the power of uh, two, four can multiply itself two times. Four is the base, then two is an exponent. Just like that, here we can give a reference for the given number base after we uh, give an argument like is equal to power, then bracket, the base is our. Uh, B2, for example, the, our exponent will be 2 because uh, on, the, on, the, on the above line, it's the square. The square means 2 times. The base will multiply itself 2 times. If the exponent is 3, then this B2 will multiply itself 3 times. That is the way how we are dealing with the powers. Maybe if I'm correct, thank you. So this 45.75, uh, what is the base and what is the exponent? Okay, yeah, okay, please. 45.75 times 45.7 times. 45.7 times multiply itself twice, like 45.7 times 45.75. Hello, Derek, I don't know if you heard me. Uh, yeah, for, for this particular example, for example, here we are referring 45.75 as a base and the two as an exponent because that means 45.75 
multiply by 45.75 because our exponent is 2 then 45.75 multiply itself twice if the exponent is 3 45.75 times 45.75 times again 45.75 if the exponent is 3 but here it is 2 then 45.7 times 45.7 that's all the same will be true for all the the rows here so maybe okay. like okay okay sorry I, I i want to ask from there the 45.75 in writing them down uh, are we going to put the square uh, equal sign and um, um, brackets then b2 comma sign, two. yeah sorry after equal sign you have to write power okay after power sign, okay yeah power then in the bracket b2 yeah b2 then yes, comma co comma two, two. two. Okay. Close the bracket okay. and then Bra enter. bracket close right yeah then enter that is that is equal equal so equal equal sign power b2 comma two bracket close is that right yeah yeah all right thank you Uh, uh sorry sorry for jumping in maybe to to put it in the in the normal math language uh, that is what would call the square root eh? the square root yeah where well, the base is down and then the exponent up is uh two in this past particular scenario we are looking at then when uh, the exponent exponent is three that is the tube root Hello. Oh, sorry. Like I was talking. Okay, so like, thank you, thank you. Uh, so this is a math term. First, uh, like Tarafa has already explained it, but to add to to make to make sure that we are on the same uh, page. For, let's understand this well be before going to the how to calculate the how to use the power function or how to calculate the squared amount so like this is it which is a base and then exponent so like the formula that we are that we are seeing here which says like is equal to and then the power and then base and then co the component it is derived from this one so like a base means uh, it, it it is an element which is uh, applied over here and then exponent is uh over here so like i will just explain what base means and what exponent means for example in this example uh to the power of four means uh multiplying two by itself four times so like we will have two times two which is four times two again which is eight and then times two again which is 16. so like uh when we are talking about base and exponent we need to clear it means that we will we are going to multiply the base by itself uh in the amount of exponent so like for example if this one is uh, five and then if the exponent is two it means that multiplying five by itself two times so it means five times five 
so we have two fives and then we are going to multiply uh, them each other which is five times five which is 25 so uh, if it's three over here it means that like five times five times five which is 125 so like uh, by default three is a cube of that number so like five cube means five to the power of three or the exponent is three and then the base is five so like when we are saying square it means that the exponent is two. that's why on this excel sheet that we are using a two so like if uh, you can decide the exponent by yourself if you wanted to multiply that specific number mm, for example if you wanted to multiply it by itself uh, to the amount of five you can use five it means that this for example if i put four over here it means that 45.75 times 45.75 four times so like we will have uh, we will have 45.75 and then uh, and then times 45.75 times 45.75 and then times 45.75 so like i will i uh, in this in this squared amount i will be expecting this amount so like it's showing us error uh, because this is not a right amount a right uh, number so if i discard this if i discarded this it will just give us the real number so it will be four so like by default when we are saying a square it means some number the power of two so like this is two it is just a default number when we are saying a square it means the power of two so uh, for this case it's like multiplying 45.75 by its own self or only like 45.75 times 45.75 it means like two 45.75 multiplying each other so like when we are saying square it means uh, multiplying uh, that number by itself so i hope it's clear now so some thumbs up maybe um, our thank equation you, thank you for uh what is being explained i think i understand i'm asking okay yes. okay sure yes my point is i understand the uh, exponent and the base that has been explained okay okay but this 45.75 that we have why do we need in this uh, column h what is the significance of having that what is the significance Honestly, and like honestly, I just included these columns so that we can understand the usage on how to use the functions or uh, where where are we going to use the function. So like the the so that like you can understand more about the usage of the functions. Uh, not like not. Uh, okay, uh, okay, that is okay. It doesn't have just for us to understand. Not that it must be in this table because I was getting yeah. confused. We know that has to be in this table for a reason yeah yeah like the whole idea is like for you guys to use the google sheet functions uh, as you went like yeah it's to make it more flexible after you understand this example bernard you can continue i i see you rudolph maybe if there is anything that you want to add you can continue all right it is okay you have already answered that question to him, which is perfect. Okay, so I don't know what else can. Bernard, I didn't hear you, sorry. Pardon. Okay, so can you hear me now? Uh, I think like it's echoing, maybe. Is it okay now? Yeah, 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 sure, you can speak now. Okay, so thank you. So I don't know whether uh, the final roundup, you can just take us through the rounded numbers again for me to properly understand that, that column. But then I think with the cumulative example, it's just a matter of summing the numbers in the amount uh, column to get the total. 
Um, so um, I don't know what is the what's the import of that. Like, um, what's the import of that? Because you could easily get the total by bringing the total at the end of to get the total amount of the uh, expenses category. So what is the import of the community? But if it's basically for us to understand how to get a cumulative uh, figure as a function, that's okay. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, and then I think the average expenses to, anyway, we will try our hands on it too, when we, we, we put in the function, but. Okay, so like, uh, if we, uh, let me revise the rounded amount part, and then we can discuss on the cumulative total. So like, on the rounded amount part, you like we know that uh, this is a round, and then this is the specific cell. Uh, there is a, a voice, maybe Bernard. Can you mute? Okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, no worries. Okay, so like uh, this is a uh, this is a general formula for round. We will have uh, just. Let me just paste it over here and then we can see more. So like for round, we will have, uh, yeah. So like we will have an equal sign first and then this is a function. So like this is a function name. So I uh, in this specific cell, the output that I wanted is to round the amounts that I spent from the grocery or uh, let's use entertainment. So like what I'm going to do is First, I will have, uh, yeah, as you can see, like, first I will have equal sign and then the function name, which is round, and then the element, the specific cell, maybe like I can write it down again, round, and then the specific cell, I will just select the cell, and then to what decimal place that I wanted to add. For example, like decimal place means the numbers that we that we have after up the point sign. For example, like 45.75, it has two decimal places. So uh, in to make it more clear, rounded amount, they are like most of the time they are applicable on when we have a lot of decimal places, maybe and if you wanted to have a more clear uh, if we wanted to present a more clear information, we are going to minimize that those decimal places. So like rounded the round function may be applicable at that time. So like for this specific, I will just use zero. Zero means like uh, I am rounding 30.5, which is uh, which has one decimal place. So like when I used zero, it will just become 31. So like if the numbers are like, uh, after the point is great, five or greater than five, it will just add one to the previous number and it will wrap the, for example, like 30.5, since this is five, it will just add once, which is 31, and then ignore the five, it will just delete the five. So it will, it's like this, that the round function works. If, uh, if that is the question, if I put the, if I put one over here, it means that I I wanted one. Okay, if I put one over here, it it means that I need one decimal place. So like, uh, it will just put thirty point five. So if I wanted two, and if what I have is one, it will just put the the existing one. So like for now, we are using zero decimal place. So rounded amount, it will work like this. The same goes for each and every cell. So like coming to the cumulative total, I just wanted to use this scenario in order for you guys to understand what is the, what is the function of what is the function of uh, sum? So like how and how can we use sum? So like cumulative total, it means to calculate uh, the totals in, in in this scenario specifically, uh, the first one will will just return the first one since we don't have any cells, and then the second one will return the sum of the two previous cells, the transportation in the the, gro the groceries category, and then coming to the third one, it will return like the sum of the 
three given cells and then when we go to the fourth one it will again sum from the grocery to the utility cell and then when we go to the last one you can see over here like in the formula it will sum from b2 to b6 which means from grocery to the dining out so like it will just give us uh, just the cumulative total it works over here like it will give us overall the total of the given expenses the, the given expenses bernard did i get you right like am i answering did you get my point or anything okay so like do you guys have any other questions so far any question or any points that you wanted to clarify maybe uh, maybe one more question especially still on the cumulative uh, total what what is the importance of you know uh, uh, using all the sums of the sales under the uh, category uh, column like the cumulative uh, cumulative total for the first one is at sea at, as, as it is but for the next and for the up to the last we are taking all the cumulative uh, sums of the numbers on column b what the importance of doing like this okay so like as have as i have already said uh, this is just a scenario so like i just wanted you guys to understand how to make a sum for one specific uh, one specific cell and then when we make it to how does it look like and how you uh, how can you do it and when it's three four uh, let's just ignore the cumulative total point and then if you guys understand how to do some for one cell for two cell three or five cell that's all okay okay Tarafa. uh any other questions so far any question or anything that you wanted to clear out so if we don't have a question so we will end our session over here i hope you will have a good day